Welcome to Karstville, USA, a typical small town from middle America. But just below the surface, a not-so-typical situation is exposed. Karst. Comprising some 25% of America, karst areas offer unique challenges when it comes to water management. But what is karst? And why does it matter to me? Karst refers to landscapes formed primarily by the dissolving away of rock. Weak acids and rainwater eat away rocks such as limestone, gypsum, and other easily dissolvable materials. This results in typical features which include caves, sinkholes, and underground streams. One of these underground streams provides the groundwater Karstville relies on for its water. When we think about the ground under our feet, if we do it all, we tend to assume that it is a solid mass, nothing but dirt and rock all the way down to the core. While this is true for much of the underground, we also know that there are many holes formed by a wide range of processes. When these holes are big enough for people to enter, we call them caves. Where these holes, tiny or large, are filled with water, we call them aquifers. Aquifers are giant subterranean reservoirs that supply drinking water for 37% of the country. Yet these water reservoirs can suffer drought and flood like their surface cousins. There are different types of aquifers depending upon type of rock. A porous media aquifer occurs where water is stored and flows through spaces between small grains. Porous media aquifers are the most common types of aquifer, often composed of sandstones and gravel. Water movement is dependent upon the size of the grain, with smaller grains restricting water movement. By contrast, a karst aquifer is formed predominantly by water dissolving openings in the rock along fractures. This Swiss cheese topology, with its much larger interconnecting conduits, is much more conducive to rapid water movement. Karst groundwater mostly flows through these conduits, which include caves, but generally refer to openings that are hydrologically identical to caves, but are too small for human access. While a large volume of groundwater is stored in tight, small fractures and other openings, more than 94% of the groundwater that readily moves through karst aquifers is moving through conduits. In a porous aquifer, springs diffuse from a relatively broad area through the granular material. However, in karst aquifers, springs flow from conduits. Since the conduit carries more water and focuses it in certain locations, karst springs typically discharge greater volumes of water and form most of the largest springs in the world. When rain hits the surface above a porous media aquifer, the water moves slowly between the grains of sand and down the water table. Prolonged rock-water interaction helps to filter water of contaminants, both natural and man-made. In a karst aquifer, conduits allow surface water to reach the water table very quickly, often resulting in an immediate rise in the water table. Conduits thus allow karst aquifers to refill more rapidly than other types of aquifers. But their very short rock-water interaction times allows effectively no filtration of contaminants. Wells are holes drilled or dug into the ground to remove groundwater, monitor groundwater, or inject liquid wastes for storage and disposal. Note that wells can extend to different depths depending on needs and costs. Deeper wells are more expensive than shallow wells. When pumping water from the deep well in a porous media aquifer, the rate of water removal causes a cone of depression, a sunken or funnel-shaped area of the water table. Friction between the sand grains holds the water table at different elevations and gravity pushes the water down to where pumping occurs. When pumping water from a well in karst aquifers, the water is much more easily and rapidly removed compared to porous media aquifers. Cones of depressions don't form as easily because water flows quickly in conduits with few frictional forces to slow the flow. Karst aquifers can be rapidly drained and refilled. The conduits that allow water to move so quickly in and out of karst aquifers also make them the most vulnerable type of aquifer to pollution. Contaminants in karst aquifers are poorly filtered, if at all. They move rapidly along hard to predict flow paths and travel along conduits that are extremely difficult to find by drilling. Intercepting a significant volume of contaminants by well access is highly unlikely. A sinkhole is a natural depression in karst areas shaped to funnel water into the aquifer. Surface water reaches the water table quickly through conduits and results in a rapid rise in the water table. 
Various pollutants such as chemicals on lawns, leaking sewers, septic systems, landfills, or gasoline spilled on the road move slowly toward the water table in porous media aquifers, but far more quickly through the conduits and caves found in karst aquifers. Pollutants travel directly to the water table and can quickly appear in well water. Surface activities can affect karst aquifers much more quickly and dramatically than porous media aquifers. Agricultural runoff from farm operations, as well as domestic animal operations, such as stockyards, can rapidly impact these areas. Likewise, with industrial operations and even municipal water treatment, the speed at which pollutants can enter the water table can often be measured in hours and even minutes. Gasoline stations and other operations that rely on underground storage of hazardous liquids can leak from corroded tanks and enter karst aquifers in short order. Internationally, significant development over karst aquifers has consistently resulted in their contamination. Best management practices for karst aquifers should minimize the placement of materials over aquifers that can contaminate groundwater and to use the best available technology to contain and filter those materials if placement away from the karst is not an option. What can your community do? The National Cave and Karst Research Institute recommends the four-point ATOM approach to karst groundwater management. Adopt karst management plans. Designate non-development zones. Avoid developing on karst. And minimize pollutant loading on karst. Needless to say, it makes sense to pay attention to what's under our feet.